Hey everyone, Kirk here from Lakeshore. Welcome to today's Learning at Home STEM Challenge. Have you ever heard about that bridge in London? You know, the one that keeps falling down? Well, for as long as bridges have been around, engineers and architects have been trying to find new ways to build bridges so that they don't fall down. Today, your challenge is to design a bridge out of paper strong enough to hold 100 pennies. Bridges have been around for thousands of years. Some of the first bridges were made using materials like rock and stone and mud. Today, we build bridges out of materials like metal and concrete, and some bridges are even made out of glass. But the material isn't what makes a bridge strong. A bridge's strength comes from its structure. There are many types of bridges out there today. This bridge, for example, is lifted up by the cables on top of it. This bridge is supported on top, but also from underneath different types of structures. Today, we're gonna to be taking a weak material like paper and giving it enough structure to be strong enough to hold 100 pennies. But before we begin, adults, here's what the kids are going to need. Two identical food containers, paper, tape, 100 pennies in a plastic bag, and a pencil. Also, help them create a simple chart on a piece of paper for them to record their results. It can look something like this. For those of you who have been watching my videos, younger kids may need a little bit more help from an adult to complete this challenge. Before your kids begin designing their bridges, we're going to talk about a few different ways they can use paper to create different bridge structures. This project is all about exploring and comparing and possibly even combining bridge structures until they find one that works. If your kids become frustrated, encourage them to look at why their bridge may not be strong enough and prompt them to explore different bridge structures, possibly even combining structures until they find one that does work. Once you have your materials together, let's get started. Before we begin, let's talk a little bit about bridges. First, what is a bridge? A bridge is a structure that crosses over an open area. A lot of times, bridges have roads or pathways on top so people can cross from one side to the other. Now let's say we have two mountains with a valley in between them, and we want to build a bridge that crosses over that valley. Easy. Just take a road, we place it on top, and the road fell. It's not a very good bridge. A good bridge is more than just a road that connects one mountain to another. A good bridge has structure. A good bridge has strength. So the easiest type of bridge is called a beam bridge. A beam bridge uses pillars to support the weight of the bridge on top. Just like that stays standing by itself, but do we think that this is bridge is strong enough to hold the weight of our car? Let's find out. And the bridge collapsed. One thing we could do is put a bunch of pillars between the two mountains and lay the road on top, but that doesn't look very bridge-like. It looks more like a wall. Now, if we were to cut a hole in that wall, that would be called an arch bridge. An arch bridge uses an archway underneath to not only support the bridge in the middle, but also leave an open area underneath for things to pass through. That looks like a bridge. Do we think this is strong enough to hold our car? This also isn't strong enough to hold our car. So if we can't build a paper bridge that's supported from underneath, we have to find a way to add structure and strength into the bridge itself. Now, one way we could do that would be to make the bridge thicker. I took a piece of paper and I folded it a few times so it's thicker than the one we just tested. Let's see how this works. It stayed standing by itself. Do we think that this thicker bridge is strong enough to hold up the weight of our car? Let's find out. Unfortunately, this bridge is also not strong enough. Let's take a look at some other real life bridges. This bridge is called a truss bridge. A truss bridge uses triangles and walls to give it strength. Notice how there's nothing underneath the bridge holding it up. Now triangles are the strongest shape, so let's start there. I folded this paper in a zigzag pattern to give it some structure. Let's see if this works. It stays by standing by itself, and it also looks pretty strong. Do we think it'll hold the weight of our car? It does hold the weight of the car, but it doesn't give it a very good road to drive on. What else can we do? How about taking a road, and like a truss bridge, giving it walls, and giving those walls triangles? Well, I made this bridge. It has two walls, and it has triangles on the side. Let's see what happens. This bridge looks pretty strong. I actually think I'm going to give it a test drive. And the car made it all the way across. This bridge was strong enough and structurally built so that it can support the weight of the car 
over the entire valley. All right, we just finished going over a few different ways you can use paper to create a bridge strong enough to hold up the weight of a toy car. But most bridges need to be strong enough to hold up more than just one car at a time. Some bridges need to be strong enough to hold up the weight of an entire train. Now your challenge is to create a paper bridge strong enough to hold up the weight of 100 pennies placed anywhere along the bridge. But before you begin folding paper, I want you to draw out your designs, then make it, then test it, and then record your results. And repeat that for every bridge that you make. Here's the chart I put together for the bridges we just tested. Having a record like this is a great tool if you get stuck. You can look back and try to find something that you might have missed or even become inspired to try combining different designs until you find one that works. This is Kirkwood Lakeshore. I'll see you next time on another Learning at Home STEM Challenge. Take care. Keep watching our Learning at Home videos. Plus, visit lakeshorelearning.com for thousands of free resources.